All right, we're just going to finish up here just a little bit more and Catherine Emmerich. Then I saw, she says, then I saw the connection between the two popes and the two temples. I am sorry that I have forgotten the numbers, but I was shown how weak the one had been in adherence and human support, but how strong and courage to overturn so many gods, I knew the number, and to unite so many different forms of worship into one. And on the contrary, how strong in numbers and yet how irresolute in action was the other, since in authorizing the erection of false temples, he had allowed the only true God, the only true religion, to be lost among so many false gods and false religions. So this other pope, the two popes, and to me as I read this, they don't seem to be at the same time period. They're separated by space. But the one pope, he says, by authorizing the erection of false temples, and by the way, Francis is erecting these Abu Dhabi Abrahamic temples. It's false. He's all into it. He, it says here, he allowed the, the only true God, the only true religion to be lost among so many false gods and false religions. So this Pope, think of the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the one true God revealed to us by Jesus Christ, the Son. That's the one true God. All the idols are fake. But this Pope allows so many religions and idols to come up that it totally obscures the one true God, the Trinity. She closes up and she says, It was also shown to me that those pagans humbly adored gods other than themselves, and that they would have been willing to admit in all simplicity the only God, the most holy Trinity, their worship was preferable, preferable to that of those who adore themselves and a thousand idols to the total exclusion of our Lord. The picture was favorable to the early ages, for in them idolatry was on the decrease, while in our days it's just the contrary. I saw the fatal consequences of this counterfeit church. I saw it increase. I saw heretics of all kinds flocking to the city. I saw the ever-increasing tepidity of the clergy. That means lukewarmness of the clergy. The circle of darkness ever widening. And now the vision became more extended, she says. Quote, I saw in all places Catholics oppressed, annoyed, restricted, and deprived of liberty. Churches were closed. And great misery prevailed everywhere with war and bloodshed. I don't know about you, but where I live, churches have been closed. And we're seeing war and bloodshed on the streets. She continues, quote, I saw rude, ignorant people offering violent resistance, but this state of things lasted not long. Again, I saw in, a, in vision... St. Peter's undermined according to a plan devised by the secret sect. That's Freemasons, by the way. At the same time, it was damaged by storms. She's talking about St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican. It was damaged by storms, but it was delivered at the moment of greatest distress. And again, I saw the Blessed Virgin Mary extending her mantle over it. People watching. You may not even be Catholic, but listen. The Blessed Virgin Mary is beloved by Jesus Christ. And it's in our tradition that she takes her blue mantle, which in a way is just her being enveloped by the Holy Spirit, and takes it and wraps it around us to protect us with the graces of Jesus Christ, one for us on the cross. So here she sees that happening. And then here's the final bit. This is the last part. Hope you're still with me. In this last scene, I saw no longer the reigning pope. But one of his successors, a mild but very resolute man who knew how to attach his priest to himself and who drove far from him the bad. So here we see there are bad priests and there are good priests. And he attaches the good priest to himself. Apparently this hadn't been the case before. Then she says, I saw all things renewed in a church which had reached from earth to heaven. I saw one of the twelve new apostles in the person of the young priest, whom the unchaste bride wanted to marry. It was a very comprehensive vision, and portrayed anew all that had been previously shown to me regarding the church's destiny. 
On another occasion, I had a, vi a vision of the vicar general staunch resistance to secular power in behalf of the interests of the church. The affair covered him with glory, though upon some other points he was to blame. I was told that I should have to go again to the Pope, but when all this will take place, I cannot say. And that's the end of the visioning. So a few conclusions here. It seems that the, okay, first of all, the vision of the two popes happens on May 13th. Guys, that's important. When we're talking about the first secret of Fatima, the third, second secret of Fatima, and the third secret of Fatima, we need to realize that the third secret of Fatima is about the Pope. Lucia says that everyone who's read the full secret, 3A and 3B, everyone who's seen it know, said it's about the Pope, even though what we have. In 3A, we see a bishop in white. She says we assumed he was the Pope, and he gets shot down. So we know that, that ultimately Fatima culminates in something with regard to the Pope. And yet, oddly enough, almost 100 years before the vision of Our Lady of Fatima on May 13th, this great stigmatist and mystic has a vision of two Popes. Good Pope and bad Pope, what does that tell me? If all this is legit, if these private revelations are legit, they may not be. I'm talking about Emmerich here. I think Fatima is totally legit, but Emmerich here, maybe not. If this is legit, though, it's telling us, with in conjunction with May 13th, that there is a bad Pope. There is a bad Pope. And this bad Pope oversees idolatry. None of us would have thought this 10 years ago, but now we have seen Pachamamas in St. Peter's, plants, potted plants called Pachamama on the altar in the presence of the Vicar of Christ. This is apocalyptic. This is evil. This is bad. So we're now in a scenario where we have a Pope allowing idolatry in the churches. It's also notable. I noticed this when I was in Rome, and I mentioned it before, Pope Francis moved the altar in the Pantheon. Call me crazy. I think that's significant. Because it, it, Anne Catherine says that the Pope Boniface IV purposely put the altar against the wall so that it wouldn't have any semblance of paganism. And now we have that altar creeping off that wall. This is just in the last couple years, folks. This is all new. It's all unfolding. So I think this does help us understand Fatima. It helps us to understand the third secret. It helps us to understand popes, a bad pope with idolatry. I don't, however, think that her referring to two popes and two churches, the Church of Light and the Church of Darkness, refers to two popes at the same time. So if someone was going to make the argument that this vision is about Benedict and Francis, having read the entire thing to you, I didn't skip one sentence. I don't see, because she she's very clear that this is a pat, the first Pope is a past reality. And we can read history books and we can say, oh, that's Boniface IV, that's the Emperor Focus. Okay, that's definitely in the past. So I, I don't think we can use this vision of the two Popes to refer to a contemporary situation of two, two guys in white cassocks. But I do think it helps us understand what's going on in the third secret of Fatima.